How's it going? My name is Dallas, aka Infernus, and today I'm going to be showing you how you could use Sony Vegas Pro 13 for beginners. If you're new to Sony Vegas um, or editing videos, then uh, you probably want to get started with uh, some professional gear, right? So you want to do Sony Vegas. Yeah, once you open it up, it looks ridiculously hard. You have no idea what to do. And uh, this tutorial is basically going to be for you guys who clearly do not know what to do. So if you're a beginner, I'm going to be going over the basic tips that you need to know in order to successfully do Sony Vegas. And let's get right into the video. So what you guys want to know about Sony Vegas first is that once you first open it up, you're going to want to start a brand new project because before you can add anything, you need to have something to start with, right? So here's going to be the option menu once you start it. So um, the options for what you want it to be is completely subjective. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, I have a template right here, so if you're new, I would just recommend starting out with a template because uh, with a template you can uh, basically avoid the trouble of trying to make one yourself and that takes a long freaking time, so just do a template. Make the width 1920 by 1080 or you can make it higher quality, um, definitely at least 1920 by 1080 and um, everything else here, it's probably going to automatically be on um, 29 point whatever. Um, but if you want to make it 60, make sure you just go ahead and make it 59.94. Uh, scrolling down, pixel format, all of this should be basically already set, but if it's not, just copy these settings, um, and then once you're done, just press OK. Now, uh, you're going to go ahead and grab the footage that you just got. Now, you can do this by either going to your file explorer or just going up here to this thing right here where it says open. You press open and then here's the files, right? This software will not accept Bandicam files. Now, once you have it converted, I would just recommend going and getting it. And here it is, the MP4. MP4, I'd recommend just using an MP4 for your source footage. Just press open. And then this is important right here. It's going to come up with this option. Do you want to set your project video settings to match this media? You're going to want to check always basis project from uh, not sending it from recommended because you don't want it. So you're going to press no. You don't want it to do that. And here it is. Here's the footage. Now this footage is 11 minutes long almost. And essentially it's just footage of me hitting 6,000 subs. So um, yeah, what you need to know first is that everything here is completely simple to use and you're not going to have any plugins when you first start so it's very simple to use all you need to know is just the basics so don't get too overwhelmed with things now if you want to get down uh if you want to zoom in and see different uh pr pro different areas of the project then just use your mouse scroller um but the first thing i do when i go about editing the video is I usually just do a fade and to do a fade in the video you just go to the top corner right here it says fade offset you could drag this uh, to as far as you want fades once you press play this is the video uh, option right here where you could see the actual thing um, and that's what it's going to look like this is obviously way less quality than what it's gonna be when you render it right here we have the time uh, bar where it shows you where you are in the actual video how far you are over here is obviously the actual seconds on to the left and uh, down here these are very important uh, this is your work area right here this is basically going to be the different uh, lanes of work so essentially these are going to be sound strips and this is going to be a video strip uh, video strips are anything containing media such as videos or uh, pictures Whereas uh, sound strips are going to be anything containing MP4 files, just anything that's not a video, pretty much. Um, and essentially, the way you know is just that a sound strip is going to have two volume sliders, and a video is only going to have one. And right here, it shows you which lane you're in by you know selecting. Obviously, you can press Control plus A, and you select everything. Control plus D to un deselect. To split, all you need to do is go into any part of the video in which you want to cut it in half because that's kind of necessary when you want to edit videos. You need to cut it in half, right? So um, go to any area. Like I said, use the mouse scroller to just scroll in in places where you want to cut and you just press the S simply or you could just right click and just go down to like cut. I'm not entirely sure uh, or split. That's what it's called. Uh, by going here although it is very easy just to press s so yeah just do that i recommend it and then you have two different areas right here you can drag it and whatnot now if you want to undo you just press Control and then z and then Control z 
just back until yeah there you go so this way you can undo it just in case you accidentally snip something and then you're like oh freak i just destroyed what i was doing and then you're like how do i get it back you just do Control z the same thing goes with the end you can do a fade option just drag it to as far as you want and uh, you could do it all the way over here if you want but i recommend just not doing that because it gets kind of annoying when your video is just sort of uh, i don't know fading for like five minutes straight uh, people might get a little bit irritated at that, um, so don't do that if you're going to be making YouTube videos. And um, over here, basically, this is your project in a hole. You can move it around stuff. You can put things in the middle right here. Basically, all you need to do to place anything is just go to any audio or video track right here and then press the open button. Make sure you're opening video tracks in the video track side and audio tracks in the audio track side. Otherwise, it's going to make a whole new track which maybe isn't that bad but i mean if you want to save space and see what you're doing because if you if you have too many tracks uh it's going to be kind of hard to see what you're doing when you're editing so i would just recommend saving the just as much space as you possibly can so here is the overview of your project now basically up here is where you can add things like video effects all kinds of jazz you can add right here to add a video effect it is really easy all you got to do is just go over to a transition so let's press s and make a transition like that or you can just go into a fading section and then drag whatever you want go into any video effect that you feel fits this transition and just drag it so let me just go to uh transitions and linear wipe because that is what it looks like it's going to give you a preview and then just drag it over here or to a transition and then drop it and here you go so it's going to come up with a linear wipe and right here is the option menu for it basically you can adjust you can adjust the angle and feather basically the feather is just essentially how rough it is or whatever you want to call it um and it's very convenient if you don't want to have just like straight edges for the actual effect so hold on let me just show you uh let me do this make it a little bit longer let's just uh let's make this uh different effect just so we can see the difference in this scenario let's go to uh brightness and contrast and there we go just so you could see the difference when you slide this way you could see the actual effect so here we go as you can see that's what it's going to look like um and what i just did right there is i just added project media effects and i did that by just going into the actual thing right and i pressed this button event media effects or you just right click and go here um and this is where you get all the options if you already have one installed all you got to do is just press add or if you want to delete this one, you just press remove, and you just press add, and then you get all these options. You're not going to have all these because I already have these installed via add-ons. So uh, over here is basically what you're going to have, and you could do all these different things. I'm not going to go through all of them because that would take a, you know, a little bit of a long time, so uh, I'm just going to skip this part. But just to give you an example, I'll go into black and whites right here. The amount is right here. You can fix the amount of black and white. Or if you want to just delete it because you realize that was a dumb mistake or you just didn't want it, you just press the remove and there you go. So you no longer have black and white. And this looks really irritating. So I'm just going to remove that too. And then here we have the actual pan and crop. You can get to the pan and crop by just going to the thing right next to the event button. And it's called pan and crop. All right. <laughs> you just click the pan and crop. And then here you have the, this option menu right here. Now, essentially... This is the, probably the most confusing part, uh, even though it's really simple once you get the hang of it. Here's going to be the timeline for your pan and crop for the entire video. Uh, this is 10 minutes long, but this is going to be the event pan and crop. So as you can see, you can zoom into the video here if you want to just have the video zoomed in or something. Um, or if you want to have some sort of slow transition to zooming in, you can go to any part of the video, like for example, 15 seconds in, and then you can or maybe even less, maybe like 10 seconds in or something like that. You can even press uh, sync cursor, which means it will sync all the movements on the actual timeline with the timeline on the pan and crop. So it makes it easier for you guys to see what you're doing. So let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, and I want to see, let me see. I want the transition to go from here to there. I think that's good enough. So it's going to have it right here. And then you can press zoom. Let's say I want to zoom into here, into the subscriber count. I'm going to press the exit button and as you can see if we play it back it's going to zoom in like that and uh, obviously it's a little bit laggy because it's just a previewer but once you edit it out it's gonna be really clean and smooth and it's gonna be great but let's say I don't want to have it there for the entire time so just go back into pan and crop and then 
go and zoom into the place where you want to have it uh, reverted back to the original. And uh, you just go, I don't know, maybe I'll do it right here. Uh, and I'll just move it a little bit and then press revert or restore. And there you go. So this way, once it's done that area, it will go back to normal. It'll be right here. And then once you wait a little bit, it will go back there as you can see. So that is how that works. Or you could just do splits, which creates a whole nother video. And then you can do a separate pan and crop there. Make sure once you're done with the sync cursor, you stop or you press it off because otherwise you'll be just editing a video and then you'll want it to go in like all the way instead of just doing a slow transition and then you won't realize it and then you'll just have to do it all over again which is going to be frustrating as freak so just make sure that's off and then you do this zoom in like that so if you go here it's going to be a quick zoom it's not you're not even going to see it's going to be like that like that literally it's going to be pretty simple and that's pretty much everything in the actual sony vegas that you need to know Right here is just a sound control, but I would recommend not messing with that unless you want to change the actual volume of the entire thing. But, you know, I would just leave it at normal. And once you're done with your actual project, obviously, this is pretty basic, but, you know, you could be done whenever you want. You got to go up here to where it says save as and then scroll down and then make it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And then just press save. And then the important thing you have to do is press file and then render as. Now, lots of people get confused and they don't know what to do in this option menu. Um, you can make your own custom YouTube thing, uh, but frankly, the one that works the best, in my opinion, is if you scroll down to where it says Sony AVC dash or slash MVC MP4. All you got to do is go there, press the arrow thing, and then the first one, Internet 1920 by 1080, which is also... Uh, 30 frames per second that works perfectly fine for YouTube I do it all the time um, and it takes a very long time to customize your own YouTube template for rendering so I mean if you don't want to waste 30 minutes of time and just do this because it works fine then go ahead and do that if you have a shorter video or if you filmed in a higher frame rate make sure you change the frame rate right here to 60 FPS and once you're done like for example I'll change it right now once you're done, just press OK. Make sure you go back to make sure it says 60 or 59 right here to make sure it worked. And then just go into Browse. And then select whatever you want to be your video. And once you're done, just press Render. Oh, and also, it's probably going to manually select this uh, render loop region only. Make sure that's unselected because what the loop region is, is essentially it's just this area of selection. And if you don't have anything selected, it's uh, it's not going to render anything. So, uh, yeah, I know a bunch of people are going to ask me if I don't cover that. So just make sure you have that unselected. And that's pretty much the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. That is Sony Vegas in a nutshell. Obviously, I didn't go ever go over everything you can do in the actual thing because, you know, this is just a beginner tutorial. But if you guys do want to know uh, other things you can do with this program, make sure you go ahead and check out some of my other videos that I've done on it. And in the meantime, if this did help you, make sure you do leave a like because that'd be so appreciated. One of those big blue hands definitely makes my channel better. And I will see all of you guys in the next one. Goodbye.